Hello, and welcome back to my series, where we compare the roles between League of Legends and Dota 2 through the eyes of mechanically similar heroes. We're bending the rules in this one and comparing the role of Obsessed Split Pusher by examining the gameplay similarities between League's Yorick and Dota's Brood's Mother. Without further delay, let's get going. The top lane, or off lane, is defined by, um, it's actually, no, I give up. This lane, this role, uh, this is where the psychos go, from lane bullies that don't let you play the game, to tanks, initiators, bruisers, masochists, sometimes all of those at once. What I'm trying to say is, don't let your memes be dreams. Come chill off lane. Big note, the biggest patch in years just dropped for Dota 2, and it's still too early to see how the meta evolves. Time will tell how much of this video ages like fine milk. One of the roles sometimes found in the offlane is the obsessed split pusher. This hero will dedicate their existence to destroying the towers, even if it costs them their life. It's one of the highest risk reward strategies the game has to offer, because if you get shut down, you're pathetic and useless for the rest of the game. But, on the games where you succeed, you feel like a true objective gamer. Let your team die cross map. It's part of the plan. Heals don't matter if you destroy the throne. In the case of Yorick and Broodmother, the way they both achieve that goal is by utilizing a combination of powerful swarm of summons and a hero kit generally optimized for trading in one versus one situations. Even so, their kits are actually much closer related to two other heroes than to each other. Yorick is a lot like Wraith King in all but the ultimate. Both can summon a bunch of units to mindlessly attack stuff nearby, using enemy kills to fuel their numbers. Both have lockdown and a nuke that controls the summons. And you have an empowered auto attack that deals bonus damage and has lifesteal. Though, Wraith King gets lifesteal on all autos, not just the empowered one. Meanwhile, Broodmother is a lot more like Elise. They each have a nuke that generates spiderlings, both are very comfortable in the jungle, have simple target crop control, and use webs to move around. Oh, and not to mention both have auto attacks with bonus damage and lifesteal. So then, what's the deal? Why is the playstyle of Broodmother not like Elise, or Yorick not like Wraith King? This is actually a bit of a mystery to me too. Perhaps, it's all the little things that add up. Yorick gets lifesteal once every few seconds, and his ultimate, which spawns a super unit, is more fit for pushing than fighting. At the same time, Broodmother's damage output is so tied to her spiders that she's not as reliable in a team fight where they die to any wayward AoE. I guess that's just how the meta has evolved around these two. Now that we've talked about their kits, how do these two heroes compare? In the context of obsessed split pushers, they have a lot in common. For starters, both Yorick and Broodmother have a hard time swapping lanes because of a commitment mechanic, commitment mechan because of a commitment mechanic built into their kits. Yorick's ghouls are not controllable units and will mindlessly suicide down the lane given nothing else to chase, making it difficult for him to relocate his squad. Broodmother's base stats are abysmal and her movement speed is atrocious. She relies on webs for mobility and sustain, and once placed down, these can be tough to relocate elsewhere. Next up, the summons. It's an embodiment of quantity over quality here, with up to 5 summons for Yorick, and upwards of 20 to 30 for Broodmother. These summons can do heavy damage to other heroes when empowered by the rest of the kits, but their threat to towers is where they shine the most. Finally, it won't be a fair comparison if I don't discuss their greatest difference, the way they spend their downtime. Let's assume that the lane you're in is covered by an enemy force you cannot overpower. No, God! What do you do? I'll start with Yorick. After asking around a bunch of players and looking at Yorick guides, it seems like a consensus that you have three options. First, you can hop into the jungle for a moment to farm, but the jungle respawns so slowly, making this not a sustainable strategy. 
The second option is to relocate lanes, which, as we've discussed, isn't ideal. Finally, and more common than not, the last option is to, uh, sit and wait. Yet, yeah, since there's no denying in the game, and minion manipulation is limited, you can just wait for the enemy to push back out and leave. I find this rather odd, because I'm conditioned to hate being idle, but that's what players far better than me have said to do, so... For Broodmother, when she's outmatched, she tends to flee into the jungle. With unrestricted pathing and an incentive to multiply her spiderlings, Broodmother can pressure the map in a way few others can. Not only are you a threat to the lane, but you can clear the jungle with speed, controlling the Tormentor and Wisdom Runes, and taking away farm resources the other team might have needed. Due to your speed and free pathing, it often requires a lot of investment from the enemy team in order to kick you out of your farming pattern. Your pressure is pseudo-global, because once three enemies come to kick you from the jungle, the rest of the team can take objectives with a large number advantage cross map. Sure, Yorick has some of this too, but because he needs to wait for creep waves to show up, his farming and pressure can really slow down, while Broodmother actually farms faster by making the jungle a permanent second home. With how she can scatter her spiders, she can also provide a lot more vision in her downtime than Yorick can. Oh man, how I'm itching to compare the two game maps and jungles. Another time, Tsar. Another time. Itemization. Yorick likes to build fighting items, maybe some tank here and there. But this thing? This one is worth spending time on. The Hullbreaker. It's an item that grants you and nearby minions bonus defenses and offenses, but only when there is no allied champions nearby. It's a split push focused item that goes against the whole concept of playing with the team. I know people will argue that it's balanced or fun, or that it's a team item because your team is somewhere else on the map doing stuff, but I really do hate this design. It's an item designed around you not being next to allies, and if someone comes to your lane to help push, you actually get weaker and might even get annoyed and frustrated at your ally even when all they want to do is help out. I think Holdbreaker actively disrupts cooperation and team play and punishes you for engaging in team fights. I really hate this thing. Okay, enough about me and my rants. Let's look at Broodmother's itemization. She has two build paths that are popular, depending on the meta and matchup. First is a lot like York where you can go into a fighting build to try and kill any solo enemies trying to stop your push. With all of the AoE damage at a distance possible though, if your opponent kills your spiders and runs away, they sort of win since you lost most of your pressure and are forced to build up a squad again. The other build focuses more on AoE survival to defend your spiders from getting nuked down, but going this route means you have a lot less kill pressure. This can be useful because you don't have to kill heroes to be a nuisance. You just have to keep them busy inefficiently clearing out your pushed lane as you clear the jungle and maintain a gold and objective lead. And that's it. The obsessed split pusher. Not a common role to see, but one you definitely hate going up against. Thank you very much for coming, and I hope to see you in my next video. And oh god, please stop with the hullbreaker. I fucking hate this thing so much, man. Stop, no.